Our Father, thank you for how we can come and ask you for your help as we look at your word. I did that this morning when I was reading your word and we do it now. We thank you that it's the Holy Spirit who is able to help us understand and to take to heart your truth so that it impacts our mind and our heart. So we look to you now that you would speak to us through your word. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it has been said, um, getting old is not for the faint-hearted. There's all sorts of other phrases too. I'll just use that one. Getting old is not for the faint-hearted. And, and we sort of know what that means. That's because as you get older, there's more aches and pains. There's heart and lung issues. And then there's all these losses, you know. Loss of function, loss of license, um, loss of faculties, loss of memory, loss of good friends. Gee, it's not something to look forward to. I'm going to read to you now some words from Ecclesiastes chapter 12. I don't know if you know this one. Um, Solomon writes these words at the beginning of Ecclesiastes 12. Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come, and the years draw near when you will say, I have no delight in them. Before the sun, the light, the moon, the stars are darkened and clouds return after the rain. A picture of death. The loss of loved ones. Thanks. It goes on to say, In the days that the watchmen of the house tremble and mighty men stoop, when our body shakes and we bend over back, uh, are bending over, the grinding ones stand idle because they are few. That's your teeth. And those who look through windows grow dim. Eyesight fire. What a great description. Here we go. and Keep going. And, and the doors on the street are shut. That's because you stay inside all the time. At the sound of the grinding mill is low, and one will arrive at the sound of the bird. Man, I can't even sleep in. Can I make it? Got to get up. And all the daughters of song will sing softly. Hearing goes. Very poetic. All right, so what do we make of all this? Don't get old? You can't help it. <laughs> We're all aging. And that's one perspective of it. But you know, the other perspective, if we are in the Lord God Almighty, if we are in Christ Jesus, I want to say to you all, old age is something to look forward to. And I'm going to read to you from Psalm 92 now, and before we get into Psalm 71. Psalm 92 verses 12 to 15 says, The righteous person will flourish like a palm tree, they will grow like a cedar in Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God, they will still yield fruit in old age. They shall be full of sap and very green to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Man, that's a positive spin on old age. You might be um, fading away physically, but spiritually you are flourishing and you have the absolute joy to declare God's glory to the people about you and to God himself. Now what I'm going to do, instead of looking at Psalm 92, those few verses, I'm going to me. And I must call on him all the time. They're the ABCs. And if I don't do that, I'm going to be knocked over. I'm going to be flattened. And when I think of the, the psalmist, he is struggling with uh, people of the world who are trying to pull him aside. But we can struggle against fleshly desires. We can struggle with the devil really attacking us. And I want to also say to all those who are getting older, including myself and the aged, the battle is very important when we're in older age because if we succumb and fall, we bring greater shame to Christ church and greater damage to his people. And I've seen that. In recent times, I've, I've, I've read with such distress um, people who were great preachers and leaders in the church who have fallen. Some have fallen away by the, by the world, uh, getting hold of them and they change their gospel and it becomes watered down and it becomes different to the true gospel and they're impacting all these people and bringing such damage to Christ's church. I've seen great Christian leaders who have succumbed to sinful desires and have done terrible things and really uh, affected Christ's church and even, in, even sort of helping, making other Christians even turn away from the faith. And the devil, he's just out to destroy us. That's the other battle we have. In 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. So that's the battle. 
what a battle it is. In Psalm 71, I, I read that battle that the psalmist is going through. But I want to finish um, the, uh, that little section by looking at finishing what was in uh, what Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 7 and 8. He did say, I fought the good fight, I finished the course, I've kept the faith. And then he says, in the future, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Amen. What a great hope we have. Now in the battle, I'm now going to really highlight Psalm 71, and I want to show you how as we abide in Christ, as we believe in God's goodness and care of us, as we call on him, the wonderful blessing in the battle is that we get to experience God. Oh, this is so exciting. I love this. I, I can testify of this in my own life. As we are engaged in the battle, living for Jesus, we are so blessed. And we come to know our God so much better and appreciate his glorious character. And look at this. Look at it in Psalm 71, what we see the psalmist saying. Verse 1, In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. So he knew the Lord is his refuge. Verse 2, in your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. So he, he looked at the Lord and he could see that the Lord was his rescuer and deliverer. Verse 3. Be to me a rock of habitation to which I may continually come. You have given commandment to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. So look at the psalmist telling us how God in, in his experiences in life God was his rock and his fortress. This is for us to experience. So in the battles, we get to see God so much more clearly. We get to see who he is and, and love him more and more. What a beautiful thing it is. So may we, as followers of Christ, remember the importance that life isn't about just um, enduring the battle, but knowing our God. I want you to realise every time you pick up the Bible and read it, you are engaging in God's way for you to come to know him better. The Bible is not all about rules and regulations, but about God. It's the revelation of our great God. And when you read it, you're going to learn about who our God is. And not only that, we're blessed with the Spirit. So as we live and experience life, we have the Spirit who is also helping us to know who God is. And, and that's a beautiful thing, knowing the presence and the power of the Spirit in our life. And that's how we come to experience our God and the blessings that are found in him. I love again Paul. Paul writes these words in 2 Timothy 1 verse 12, near the end of his life. I suffer all things, but I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. Notice that? Doesn't just say, I believe, I know whom I have believed. And that's something that is available for every one of us. We can come to that place, we're not just believing, but we know who we have believed. So let us know the Lord better and experience him. I love the book of Jeremiah. Can't help but quote from Jeremiah now. Chapter 31, 2 and 3. This is what the Lord says to Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name, call to me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. And some of those great and mighty things, the majority of that is God himself. We come to know God so much more. All right, so now we're going to... Uh, look at this final point about the becoming. And that's very strong in Psalm 71. So as we go through the battle and as we come to um, experience God and, and the blessings of our God, we are enabled to become something. What are we enabled to become? Two P words. We are enabled to become a people who praise the Lord with all our heart. And we're enabled to be a people who proclaim his glory to the people about us. 
That's what we are meant to become through all the things of life we go through. So, here we go. As you get older, the danger is that we become more grumpy and selfish. Or we can become more gracious and serving. Even more than that, we become a people who praise the Lord day by day and proclaim his name to all those about us. And that's what I see in this psalm. Let's have a look at this. In Psalm 71, 6 to 8, we read, By you I have been sustained from my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. Amen. Look at that. I have become a marvel to many. Verse 7, For you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day long. You know, as we get older, that's exactly what should be, becoming, should be happening with us. We are becoming more and more a person who cannot help but praise God continually. Why? Because we have experienced God in our life. He's been our rock and our refuge. He's been our fortress and our deliverer. He's been the God who's been faithful and true, and we can't help but praise him. Verses 14 to 16, also in Psalm 71. But as for me, I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and of your salvation all day long, for I do not know the sum of them. I will come with the mighty deeds of the Lord God. I will make mention of your righteousness, yours alone. I love this. This is the joy of, as you get older, if you've been walking with the Lord, the joy of knowing him more and more. Well, you can't even contain that joy anymore and you've got to, you've got to just burst forth in praise, praising him for who he is and how good he is, more and more and more. I love this. And I know in my own life, I, 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 I have this in my own life and I hope you do too. I, I thank the Lord for, in these last few months, I've had time to reflect and to be filled with praise more and more for our God. Uh, in special things I've been reading in the Bible, in our home group through John's Gospel. What about when I physically fell and fractured my back? It, it, I, I was so blessed as God helped me see his sovereignty in that fall and his care for me and, and the peace he gave me, even as I'm waking up from, from, um, from passing out and I knew that peace of God on my life. And what am I to do with that? I can't help but praise the Lord for how good he is. And he could have taken me home, but he's got me here still and I can't help but praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Everything in life, including the trials and troubles, the falls and the failures, even in sin, if we are in Christ, we are meant to see the Lord more clearly and to love him more dearly causing us to be better worshippers, praising his name all day long. That's what we're meant to be becoming. And the other thing that we're meant to be becoming is those who proclaim his glory to the people about us. Not just praise to God, but praise, proclaiming his name to the people about us. And I'm going to read to you now that section, Psalm 71, that Bob read out, verses 17 to 19. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth... And I still declare your wondrous deeds. Still. There's a danger of an old person no longer doing that still because they've lost their way. They've fallen away. But I still declare your wondrous deeds. Verse 18. And even when I'm old and grey, you know, good, that's right there. Old and grey, that's how it is. Even when I'm old and grey, O oh God, do not forsake me until, until I declare your strengths to this generation, your power to all who are to come. For your righteousness, O God, reaches to the heavens. You have done great things, O God, who is like you. And that's the psalmist saying that. What about us who live in the New Testament period? We have seen God do awesome things in the sending of his son, Jesus dying for his people and rising again and sending the spirit and giving birth to the church. Wow! Wow! We have so many great things to declare, praising God, but proclaiming, proclaiming the great deeds of our God and our salvation 
to all those about. The psalmist is committed to make sure that his generation would hear him proclaiming the glory and the gospel of our God. That's what we're meant to be committed to. All that I've been experiencing, my own salvation, God helping me through life, is not to be kept silent and quiet and to be proclaiming this to all the people about. Because we want people to come to know God. We want people to be saved. We want people to experience what we have experienced in Christ. And look at these closing words. I'm going to read this next section to you. What a way to go out. What do you reckon? Here we go. Psalm 71, 20 to 24. You who have shown me many troubles and distresses will revive me again and will bring me up again from the depths of the earth. May you increase my greatness and turn to comfort me. I will also praise you with a harp, even your truth, O my God. To you I will sing praises with the lyre, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to you and my soul which you have redeemed. My tongue also will utter your righteousness all day long, for they are ashamed, for they are humiliated who seek my hurt. Wow. So this morning's message is all about, as you get older, we're all getting older, every one of us fits into that category, we are meant to be becoming something. Have you got sight of that? You are meant to be becoming by God's, you experiencing God and the work of God in your life, you're meant to be becoming a person who praises the Lord all day long. Where you are with that? And you're meant to be a person who is proclaiming the Lord, proclaiming his gospel, proclaiming his character to those about you. God is in the business of what you are becoming. He always has been. He wants us to be a people who praise his name and proclaim his glory. I want to finish with the words from 1 Peter chapter 2, 9 and 10. You are a chosen race. You know what? Let's stand for this. This is God's word. And then we'll sing our last song. 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And the big do word there is proclaiming the excellencies of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. Let's have our last song while you remain standing. A new song, um, Bess and Steve are going to introduce it to us as well. It's an easy song to sing, beautiful words. Christ, our hope in life and death. And then after that, I'll close in prayer. Christ in which
he lives and what reward will heaven bring everlasting life with him Amen. there we will rise to meet the Lord their sin and death will be destroyed and we will feast in endless joy when Christ is ours forevermore but until that day we're in a battle let's encourage each other and help each other even the elderly as they go through battles let us behold the blessings of our God in the battle let us talk about the blessings the blessing of our God in our life. May we become those people God always intended us to become, a people who praise his name and who proclaim his name to all about. Amen. Father, that's our prayer. Lord, as we stand before you, I want to say first of all, sorry, Lord, for how we don't become the people we're meant to become so often. We get distracted and we get worldly. We turn, turn to other things. I ask for us all that you would help us if there's stuff we need to repent of, that we would. And yet you would help us to be engaged in the battle, that you'd help us to experience the rich blessings you have for us to enjoy. And as a result, may we be a people who become a people of praise to you and a people who proclaim your great name. Father, you are so wonderful. You're so glorious, so beautiful. Thank you for this Psalm 71. In old age, the psalmist just cannot help but to speak of you. Thank you, Lord, for helping us in life. What a great day we've had so far. Now, I know we've got Hospitality Sunday now. I pray that you bless our, our meals together and the fellowship we have, that Lord, and you bring us back tonight as we hear BJ and Chippo share about the awesome things you're doing in Zimbabwe, a place of drought and despair. But Lord, thank you for the gospel shining brightly in the darkness. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>